we're called to walk in excellence. Now, we know the most excellent thing is love. 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, but earnest desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choice graces. And yet I will show you still a more excellent way, one that is better by far and the highest of them all, love. So everybody should have some books and teachings on love because of all the things that we study, we need to study love. We need to look at 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8, and take those words apart and ask yourself, am I patient? Am I kind? Am I humble? Am I willing to give up my right to be right? Am I mad at anybody? How quick do I forgive somebody? Am I touchy? <laughs> Am I easily offended? Do I always believe the best? We have to get serious about this. Jesus said, one new commandment I give unto you. One. One new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another just as I have loved you by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And pretty much in every message I preach now, I say a little something about the importance of forgiving people that have hurt you. And I think I'm just going to keep it up because there are more and more angry people in the world today than I have ever seen. And you know, the Bible says in Matthew 24, which is a chapter about the sign, signs of end times, that in the last days, because of the lawlessness and the wickedness in the land, the love of the great body of people, that's us, will grow cold. And boy, the devil loves that. Because I'll tell you what, the highest form of spiritual warfare is red hot on fire love. Worst selling book I ever had was one on love. It's pitiful. How can you write a book on love and nobody wants to buy it? But I bet I could write one on success and sell it. I mean, I've worked at this love thing because I'll tell you, I was not a very loving person. And I've been studying it for a long time. And I'll tell you what, I do not have the energy to be angry. You say, well, the person that hurt me doesn't deserve forgiveness. Well, even if they don't, you deserve peace. Yeah. Amen. And this is such a problem worldwide. I, I, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything, but there's a good possibility and a good probability that there's more people in here tonight that have some kind of unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody than there is those that don't. And we've got to stop it. Because we need the anointing. We need our churches to be anointed. We need our leaders to be anointed. We all need, today I think you need to be anointed to get in and out of the grocery store with sanity. <laughs> you certainly need to be anointed to raise kids. <laughs> Amen? How many of you agree with me? I'm not going to preach all night on that. But please, 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 if you're mad at anybody, do what the Amplified Bible says. Drop it, leave it, let it go. That's, that's the way the Amplified Bible puts it. Drop it, leave it, let it go. You don't have time for that. You're Christ's representative. He's making his appeal to the world through you. Do the most excellent thing 
and love them. Some of them you may have to love from a distance, but <laughs> love them. Let me just say this real quick. Love is not having a gooey feeling about somebody. <laughs> love is how you treat people. And so the Bible says you pray for your enemies, you bless them, <laughs> And if they're hungry or thirsty, you give them food and drink. So you help them. And you can do all that and not have any kind of loving feelings toward them at all. My parents both were abusive. And as they got older, God put it on my heart to do my duty. <laughs> it's another part. That's a part of integrity, just doing your duty. Yes, duty. <laughs> yep, that word's in the Bible. <laughs> and he told me to take care of them until they died. I thought it was the devil. I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> I did. I thought, God is not going to tell me to spend my money and my time taking care of two people that abused me all my life. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, God will tell you to do that. He sure will. And I can't say that there was one time that I went to the nursing home that I wanted to go. But I did it. I did it for the Lord. And I did it because I knew it was the right thing to do. You don't have to feel like doing the right thing in order to do it. And you say, well, Joyce, did you love them? I didn't have any gooey feelings toward them, but yes, I loved them because I took care of them, I prayed for them, I blessed them, I met their needs. That's what love is. You can't stay mad at somebody for too long if you pray for them every day. It's part of excellence. We have an excellent God, don't we? He does exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Don't you love Ephesians 3.20? He does exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. More than enough. Oh, we all like that scripture. Well, how about if we apply it to ourselves? And we start doing exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. <laughs> Go that extra mile. If anybody forces you to go one mile, go two. <laughs> okay, let's just say you work an eight to five job. You get an hour for lunch. I'm going to tell you what an excellent person will do. An excellent person will clock in at 7.55, not eight, and they'll clock out at 5.05, not five. And they'll take maybe 55 minutes for lunch instead of an hour and 15 minutes for lunch. You say, well, why should I clock in at 7.55 when I don't go to work till 8? Because if you clock in at 7.55, you're not at your workstation and you're not working at 8 o'clock. By the time you get your coffee and you talk to all your friends, it's probably 8.20 or 8.30. <laughs> and you're not going to like it when I say this, but you know what? It's stealing. I better behave, you won't let me come back again. <laughs> I'm not saying anything to you that God hasn't said to me. When, when we were, had so very little money for so many years, I had to clip and cut every coupon I could find and buy day old bread and dig around in the dented can basket. They don't have those anymore, but they used to have dented cans in one of the grocery carts and, or cans with no labels on them. And, you know, I'd hope to get peaches and get cat food and didn't have a cat. <laughs> and uh, God said, Joyce, don't you think I can afford just a few more cents for some fresh bread? 
But I had a fear on me of never, of never having enough because I wasn't taken care of as a child. And so I had not a frugal spirit, but a cheap spirit. I did everything the cheapest way it could possibly be done because I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough. So we didn't have the money for steak. We never ate steak. It was always hamburger, chicken, hamburger and chicken, chicken and hamburger, hamburger and chicken. And so chickens would go on sale at the store, three for a dollar. And there was a little fine print on the coupon that said, limit three per customer, please. Or three per family, please. You know, we don't like the fine print. <laughs> and one day I saw that. And I didn't want three chickens, I wanted 12. <laughs> and so I took two of my kids with me. <laughs> and we all got three chickens and I put them in line behind me and I acted like I didn't know them. <laughs> and my heart's pounding in fear and I'm thinking, oh God, I hope I gave them enough tax money. teaching a Bible study. <laughs> Had a big vision to do what I'm doing today. Come on, some of you may have a big vision to do something great, but right now you're in the school of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Well, you guys don't sound as happy as I want you to. 